The purpose of this video is to provide a practical guide on the remembraning of B1 modules fitted with either reverse osmosis or ultrafiltration membranes. First, a demonstration of the various component parts of the B1 module. The tube bundle is made up of 18 perforated stainless steel tubes, fitted into circular tube plates at each end. The tube bundle fits inside the stainless steel shroud, sealed by an O-ring. The purpose of the shroud is to collect the liquid which passes through the membranes, called permeate. The permeate usually exits the shroud through the upper of the two shroud offtakes. Later in this video, the contents of the shroud will be referred to as the shroud side of the module and the contents of the tubes as the tube side. The perforated tubes house the membranes. The sealing arrangements at each end of the membranes consists of a shim, rubber coated on one side, a set of tube seals, one per membrane tube, and an end cap. The shim has the functions of supporting the tube seals and preventing permeate leakage. The end caps direct fluid into the membrane tubes and connect them, either into one pathway of 18 tubes in series or into two pathways of nine dependent on which type of end cap is fitted. Reverse osmosis plants are usually fitted with the end cap type which connects all 18 tubes in series. The end cap which has the inlet and outlet connections is referred to as the feed end cap and the one at the other end of the module which has no connections is referred to as the blank end cap. Ultrafiltration plants are usually fitted with the end cap type which connects the tubes in two pathways of nine tubes in series. The end cap at the feed end of the plant is referred to as the A end cap and at the opposite end the B end cap. Some PCI ultrafiltration plants are fitted with a third type of end cap system which connects all the tubes in parallel. On this video, we shall be demonstrating the remembraning of one module fitted with end caps of the type which connects all 18 tubes in series, but it should be noted that the basic procedure is the same for all types. The end cap fits onto the central stud and is retained by either a hexagon or dome-headed nut acting on a washer and pressure plate. Connections to and from the end caps are sealed by means of square section rubber seals. There are four basic steps involved in remembraining the B1 module. One, removing pipework, end caps, tube seals, etc. Two, removing old membranes. Three, fitting new membranes. Four, 
4. Replacing end caps, pipework, etc. Note that for all remembraning operations, it is advised that overalls and goggles are worn. Before beginning to dismantle the module, make sure the surrounding area is clean and free of debris. The shroud side should always be drained before the tube side. When draining the tube side, ensure the air release valves, where fitted, are open to atmosphere. Using the two-pin plate or spanner supplied in the toolkit, loosen the nuts at each end of the module before removing the feed pipework connections. Ensure the shrouds do not rotate whilst doing this. Remove the manifold to module and module to module pipework connections. Take care not to lose the square section o-rings or screws. Remove the nut, washer and pressure plate. Remove the end caps. Remove the tube seals from both ends. The tube seals should always be discarded. Remove the shims. Shims can usually be used again, but they should be inspected and replaced if damaged. Remove the old membranes. If in exceptional cases the membranes are hard to remove, then steam should be injected using the special steam end cap which can be supplied by PCI. Before injecting steam, fit the reversed blank end cap and ensure that there is a safe working area at this end of the module. Then inject steam for a maximum of 30 seconds. This will break the bond between the membranes and the stainless steel support tubes. Note. Any water used on AFC 99 membranes should not contain any chlorine. For RO membranes, fit the special blanking disc against the face of the module at the blank end. Reverse the end cap and replace the end fittings with the nut just finger tight. For UF membranes, 
omit the blanking disc and use the reversed end cap. Lift the black tube in which the membranes are supplied until it is level with the module to be remembraned. Note the number marked on the white end cap. This is called the batch number. The batch number and module location should be recorded on a standard form. This will enable the quality control performance of the installed membranes to be traced by PCI. Remove the white end cap. Remove the bag of tube seals. Pull the plastic bag out of the support tube approximately 12 inches. The plastic bags contain a small quantity of proxyl, which is a preservative. Avoid contact with the chemical as much as possible. The wearing of protective gloves is advised when handling membranes. Wash off any splashes to the face immediately. Untie or cut off the knots on the ends of the plastic bags. Fold the plastic bag ends back over the support tube. Taking just one membrane tube at a time, proceed with the remembraning. Push the membrane in until it touches the blanking disc on RO modules or the reversed end cap on UF modules. Note, membranes must never be forced into the support tube. If the membrane feels tight towards the end of the insertion, use the membrane insertion tool supplied in the toolkit to prevent damage to the end of the membrane. Fit the rubber coated shim at the feed end of the module, ensuring that the rubber coated side is facing the module tube plate and that the holes for the location pins are properly aligned. The membranes and location pins may protrude through the holes in the shim, but this is not essential. Now fit the tube seals at the same end. Fold a tube seal between thumb and finger. Insert this seal into a membrane tube. Repeat these operations for the other 17 tube seals at the same end of the module. Use the tube seal insertion tool, often referred to as a prodder. Make sure that this seal is properly seated against the membrane surface and the shim by using a rotating action. Correct seating of the tube seal is essential. Incorrect seating could cause the tube seal to turn inside out or flip when the plant is in operation, leading to a leaking, blocked or inefficiently cleaned module. Using a torch, make a final check that each tube seal is properly seated. It is necessary to fit the end cap loosely at the feed end. The end cap should always be fitted individually. Never fit them with the piping connected. Fit the end caps and end fittings, making sure the locating pins are aligned with the holes in the end cap. Waggle the end cap about in order to locate the tube seal flanges in the end cap recesses. Failure to install the end cap correctly could result in nipped tube seal flanges. This will result in leaks when the plant is brought up to pressure. Now remove the end fittings. End cap and blanking disc at the opposite end of the module. And repeat the procedures for fitting the shim and tube seals at this end of the module.
loosely fit the end cap. When all the shims, tube seals, end caps and end fittings have been fitted at both ends, fit the module pipework connections. Note, a little care at this point will save a lot of extra work later. Tighten the nuts using the torque wrench and the two-pin tool provided in order to prevent the module from rotating. Repeat this operation at the opposite end of the module. The correct torque for the B1RO module is 10.4 kilograms meter or 75 foot-pounds. The correct torque for the B1UF module is 5.5 kilograms meter or 40 foot pounds. Having completed the remembraning process, ensure that the correct procedures are followed to put the plant back into service. Refer to the plant operating manual for detailed instructions on air release, preservation, bedding in and pre-process cleaning procedures.